Hi, I'm Doug from Global West. And today I was going to talk to you a little bit about 1963 through 82 Corvette rear strut rods. And we happen to make an adjustable strut rod for those years. Part number is a TBC7. But we're going to explain what the differences are between our strut rod and the factory strut rod. First, the factory strut rod is going to be a rod that has rubber bushings on each end and is a fixed length. It uses an eccentric or a cam, which looks like this. Now this is an aftermarket cam, not a factory cam. The factory cam will not have this extra hole here, okay? But you can see how the bolt goes in one side. It's not in the center. And when this is rotated, the shaft here allows it to shift. You know, it pushes or pulls that strut rod in or out which changes the camber in the back of the car. Now the camber is the tilt of the wheel. The tire, so like if it tilts inboard where the top of the tire is more towards the, in, towards pointing toward the inside of the car, that's a negative camber. If it points up the other direction, that's positive camber. Well, because the strut rod is a fixed length and this cam is holding the whole show together here, this cam can become a problem. These have a tendency to slip can slip from hard impact, uh, let's say severe bumps in the road and you really get jarred, or, uh, you know, railroad tracks, something that's really severe. This could actually shift. We, in high performance cars, when you're cornering really hard, it's possible for this cam to shift. And when this shifts, you're going to lose your camber settings, but you're also going to lose the toe setting. So now the car can do a number of other things as well, which are not proper for handling, of course. So. Eccentrics is not necessarily the great way to go here, especially in a performance application. So these strut rods, which we produce, we eliminate the, eliminate the eccentric. These square plate here, these have different hole positions, and we'll get into that. But when you put this in here, and it indexes in the mount underneath the differential, it can't turn. It's locked in position where this cam can shift, okay? The way we set camber is by adjusting this, the length. Right and left hand rod ends, it changes the length, which allows us to change the camber. We can set it anywhere we'd like. Much more efficient in adjusting our alignment. Not to mention in a high performance application, gives us multiple advantages over the stock setup. So what we want to do is, we're putting a Corvette together in our shop. It's a little noisy. But let's take a few minutes and see how this goes on our Corvette. We build these with a lockout and there's three holes in it. This allows you to shift this if you ever need to any direction you want, whether you need to pull it in to get more adjustment or out or in the center. So just by how we rotate this block will tell us what we're going to do in reference to on the alignment. I like to keep a lot of threads here. So we start off in the center. So when I put this in here, see how that, by rotating that here, this is more in the center of the plate versus offset. Okay, you got a good idea of what we're doing here with uh, the plates and how that strut rod bolts in. It's a really easy setup to install. It solves a lot of problems on the back of the Corvette. It locks that alignment in, maintains it. It's something that you should consider, especially if you're running big tires, you know, or you're doing a lot of performance driving. This is something that will help at the end of the day. So. Part number, TBC7 for 63 through 82 Corvettes, rear strut rod kit, 
comes as a pair, ready to bolt on, get alignment after you're done, and you're ready to go.